The red object you're seeing in this image is the farthest galaxy found to date. It's so far away that even light had to travel 13.5 billion years to reach us. But what's so special about the nature of this distant galaxy? Why doesn't it make sense to astronomers? And most importantly, why do they want to focus the James Webb Space Telescope in that region? Spotting the first generation of stars and galaxies has been a holy grail in astronomy. But the problem is that these galaxies are very faint and highly redshifted. Until 2022, GNZ 11 was the oldest and most distant known galaxy yet identified in the observable universe. The light travel distance to this galaxy was 13.4 billion light years. But now, astronomers have found a new galaxy about 100 million light years more distant than GNZ11. They have named it HD1, and it lies in the constellation of Sextons. However, HD1 is a mystery in itself. First, the galaxy's red color is due to the redshift. Whenever the source of light is moving away from us, the wavelength of the light it emits gets stretched. That is, it increases towards the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Because the universe is expanding, galaxies in deep space appear red-shifted. According to Hubble's law, the farther a galaxy is in deep space, the faster it moves away from us, and its redshift is more. The redshift phenomenon allows astronomers to determine how far the galaxy is from us. The light travel distance to HD1 is 13.5 billion light years. But the present proper distance, which considers the universe's expansion, is 33.4 billion light years. So discovering this far-flung galaxy was not a piece of cake. It involved 1,200 hours of observing time using four powerful optical and infrared telescopes. The Subaru Telescope, the Vista Telescope, the UK Infrared Telescope, and the Spitzer Space Telescope. The team had to find HD1 out of more than 700,000 objects. Although HD1 appears red, a detailed spectroscopic analysis of this galaxy reveals that it is unusually bright in the ultraviolet region of the EM spectrum. Now this means there are some highly energetic events taking place in HD1. But finding out what's exactly happening in a galaxy 13.5 billion light years away is not easy. The researchers said it's like guessing the nationality of a ship from the flag it flies, while being far away ashore, with the vessel in the middle of a gale and dense fog. One can see some colors and shapes of the flag, but not entirely, so it's ultimately a long game of analysis and exclusion of implausible scenarios. However, the team says there could be two possibilities regarding the nature of this old galaxy. It could either be a Herculean starburst galaxy or a mighty quasar. But how do they explain the observations? And what are the problems in both of these models? A starburst galaxy is one with an exceptionally high star formation rate, or SFR for short. The star formation rate is an important parameter in galactic and extragalactic astronomy. A starburst is a phase in a galaxy's evolution that can happen for different reasons. Even galactic interactions can lead to a starburst, like in the case of the antenna galaxies. These two galaxies have been merging for the past 100 million years, and their star formation rate has skyrocketed because of the interaction. In this image, the blue region represents high star formation activity. 
ISFR rates make a galaxy luminous. So astronomers calculated the number of stars that would have to be forming to produce that much light, and it came out to be 100 per year. That's 10 times what you would expect for a galaxy this old. However, there is an explanation for this. The first generation of stars formed was significantly hotter and more luminous than the modern stars. If that is the case, we might be looking at the light from the so-called Population 3 stars with little to no elements other than hydrogen and helium. The second possibility is that the luminosity is because of a mighty quasar. A quasar is the most powerful object in the universe. This active galactic nucleus involves a supermassive black hole feasting on the surrounding material at such a rate that the heat generated blazes of light across the universe. The team calculated the size of the supermassive black hole required to match the observed luminosity of HD1, and the results were surprising. They found that the black hole had to be 100 million times more massive than the sun. That's a lot of mass. Given the period we are talking about, 330 million years after the Big Bang is too soon for a black hole to become so massive. If it is indeed a quasar, it must have grown out of a gigantic seed at an unprecedented rate. This poses a significant challenge to the current black hole models. The team hopes that future observations with the James Webb Space Telescope, a machine optimized for peering into the early universe, will reveal the nature of this mysterious dawn light with its advanced infrared capabilities. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more. Make sure also to watch the second episode of the Sunday Discovery series, in which we discussed the discovery of the largest galaxy found to date.